There are a lot of things from yesterday that aren't socially acceptable today. Casual sexual harassment in the workplace, smoking in a restaurant, and popular opinion of nuclear weapons. But when the Cold War is on the line and the U.S. government needs to continue its development of weapons, how do you turn public opinion? Well, you do that by turning swords into plowshares. My name is Alice, and up next on Cold War Icons, we take a look at how the U.S. government used the atomic bomb for peaceful purposes. This is Project Plowshare. Let's get started. scientific experiment, an underground nuclear explosion in an area of frequent earthquakes. The town is just west of such an area. Well, perhaps we all were a little concerned about the shot when we first heard about it, thinking perhaps it might trigger off an earthquake. However, by the time the shot, the day of the shot, well, people were going about their business unconcerned. Well, I was a little concerned about that big shot triggering an earthquake here, but uh, I was out there in the field and I looked right over that way when the explosion took place and I didn't see any dust or didn't even feel a quiver of any kind. Well, I was in the house and I didn't feel anything either. Few communities have had the experience which Fallon residents had. Project Show was only the third nuclear experiment ever conducted in the country outside of a Nevada test site. Most citizens of Fallon took the detonation in stride. They learned that the Atomic Energy Commission takes all reasonable precautions to ensure the safety of the public, and that official predictions of the effects of a nuclear explosion were borne out by the facts. The year is 1963. In the past decade, and maybe a little more, it had been awfully crazy for the entire planet. The whole planet was introduced to nuclear saber rattling, using nuclear tests to posture and really build prestige among the countries of the earth. Also, to show that your opponent that you meant business. But generally, people have had enough. With the testing of Tsar Bomba and the extensive US testing in the Pacific of hydrogen weapons, public opinion on both sides of the pond have really turned against nuclear weapons. The days of energy too cheap to meter are gone. People wanted the bomb gone. But the nations, well, it's still a cold war. They're invested in this. It's their entire backbone of their defense. The governments of the world, more specifically the United States government, would have to find a new way to sway public opinion. And the way you do that is by trying to find a peaceful use for the atomic bomb, which is where our story today begins. By exploiting the peaceful uses of the friendly atom in medical applications, earth removal, and later in nuclear power plants, the nuclear industry and government sought to allay public fears about nuclear technology and to promote the acceptance of nuclear weapons, which the government desperately needed. The American public at this time is already well aware of what fallout is. The detonation of a weapon at ground level contaminating dust and earth, having it thrown up into the air and having those radioactive particles come down. These, everybody knows now, causes cancer. They get into your food supply, your water, and people are scared. People don't want to have to live with the nuclear specter anymore. So the idea was proposed that what if we use nuclear devices for construction? What happens if we could cheaply and economically widen the Panama Canal, for instance, with precision weapons? What if we built underground terminal gas storage for natural gas? We could use it for fracking to pump out other gases from the earth that just wouldn't be feasible with conventional mining methods. Some of the experiments were so simple and kind of dumb at the point, it was like, could we just dig a really big hole with a bomb? To answer that question, yes. But that's not really the point. If you could create infrastructure with nuclear weapons, public opinion would turn. So this is how the whole idea got started with the plowshare. Now, at the same time, 
some of the experiments conducted under Plowshare and eventually the Vail Uniform Program were militaristic in intention. However, a lot more were conducted for peaceful uses. So let's just get started. The first one on our hit list is Project Gnome. So now we're going a little bit southeast of Carlsbad, New Mexico. In the southeast corner of New Mexico, we arrive at Carlsbad Caverns, one of the deepest, largest, and most ornate caverns in the world. Carlsbad Caverns began forming more than 20 million years ago, when the land uplifted and water seeped into limestone cracks, gradually enlarging them to form a honeycomb of chambers. To the east lies another large cave. This one, however, was created in a fraction of a second. 35 miles southeast of Carlsbad is the site of the first nuclear detonation in the Plowshare program, codenamed Project Gnome. Unlike most nuclear tests conducted in the United States, which generally focused on weapon development, Shop Gnome was designed to focus on scientific experiments. There were generally three applications that they wanted to study. One was to study the possibility of converting the heat produced by a nuclear explosion into steam for production of electrical power. Sort of like um, explosive geothermal, in a way. Exploring the feasibility of recovering radioactive isotopes for scientific and industrial applications, and the use of high flux neutrons produced by the detonation for a variety of measurements that would contribute to the scientific knowledge in general and to the reactor development program in particular being conducted by the United States. <laughs> and sort of like the uh, Johnny Cash song, uh, One Piece at a Time. Uh, my plan went all right until I set off a 3.1 kiloton nuclear device underground one night. Because the plan didn't work. While the shot itself was successful, a lot of things failed. Even worse so was that this was the first test conducted under Plowshare, and to show the world that nuclear weapons could be used for peaceful purposes, representatives from the UN, dignitaries, press, even the local residents were invited out to come and see the spectacular event. Now, Gnome was placed 361 meters below underground, or 1184 feet, and was supposed to be self-sealing upon detonation, the uh, borehole that was dug down to place it. Even though the Gnome shot was supposed to seal itself, the plan did not work. Two to three minutes after detonation, smoke and steam began to rise from the shaft. Consequently, some radiation was released and directed off-site, but it quickly decayed. So it was it was supposed to seal, but it didn't prove an environmental hazard or to a danger to the public. The resulting cavity created by the blast was about 170 feet wide and almost 90 feet high, and with a floor of melted salt. The reason why there was a floor of salt put in before the blast was that in the concept of trying to trap the steam and pipe it off, if they just set the blast off in the rock, a lot of it, the heat, would simply be transferred into molten rock. And it wouldn't be, it wouldn't work. The plan would fail. They needed a medium that would trap the heat that could be flushed with water to create steam. Salt was the chosen material to do this with. Now, it would be six months before explorers could even enter the cavity. And even when they did, they only encountered 5 Milleronkin, so it was perfectly safe for them to visit. While the 3 kiloton explosion had melted the 2400 tons of salt placed in before, the explosion had caused the collapse of the sides and tops of the chamber, adding 28,000 tons of rubble that mixed with the molten salt and rapidly reduced its temperature. This was the reason the drilling program had originally been unsuccessful finding temperatures of only 200 degrees Fahrenheit, or 93 degrees Celsius. 
meaning that if they wanted to pipe water through, they wouldn't get enough steam to generate electricity. All you would see today, should you go visit the site, which you still can, is just a simple weathered plaque, letting you know that beneath your feet, a nuclear detonation occurred. Four Corners area of northern New Mexico and southern Colorado is an area of intense industrialization and natural gas production. It is here that the Atomic Energy Commission conducted three nuclear detonations. This is now moving into natural gas production, and this had a lot more economic viability. Mm, but there were a few catches. In fact, this is probably the first case of fracking that I know of in the United States. So, let's briefly cover fracking. Water is pumped into the ground in areas of natural gas bearing rock. Water goes down, fractures this rock, carries the gas out with it, it is piped or pumped off. At this time, the water-based concept wasn't known yet, so they decided to do it explosively. Three tests were going to be conducted to test this theory. Woolison, Rio Blanco, and Gas Buddy. Each one with the same concept, just the weapons varying from yield to yield. But Gas Buggy is really the major one, so let's just hit that, because they're pretty much all sim similar, just different sizes of weapon, but nothing over 40 kilotons. Gas Buggy was carried out by the Lawrence Livermore Radiation Laboratory and the El Paso Natural Gas Company, with funding from the Atomic Energy Commission. The site, laying in the Carson National Forest, is about 21 miles southwest of Dulles, New Mexico, and 54 miles east of Farmington. It was chosen because natural gas deposits were known to be held in the sandstone beneath Linderdo Canyon. A 29 kiloton device was placed at a depth of geez, around 4,200 feet underground, and then the well was backfilled before the device was detonated. Detonation will work. It fractured the rock, and the gas got pumped up. It got pumped up, and you can actually see it. They have one of the burn-off uh, pipes, or whatever you call them, burn-off towers for the gas. It got spark and ignition, proving the gas could be fractured using an explosive nuclear method. Naturally, there was a problem with this. You just set off a little 30-ton, kiloton device, and now you want to sell this stuff to the public? Can't do that, fam. Gas was far too radioactive to be piped off. However, it proved the concept of fracking worked. Gas buggy was the first of these tests. Then it was carried out by Rulison and then Rio Blanco. Both were designed to really try and refine the method. They wanted to use different levels of explosives. Maybe refine the borehole so that they can pipe the gas off without it collapsing in on itself. Both proved fruitless with generally the same result. Gas was fractured from the rock, it got piped up, but they couldn't sell it. However, all of these were precursors to the water-based or hydraulic fracking technologies we now have today. So I mean, a necessary stepping stone. They've helped the United States become one of the largest oil producing countries on the planet. Interesting, but I wouldn't buy that gas. <laughs> This is actually going to conclude the Plowshare series of tests. Well, at least for right now. We might jump back into one or two of them, but these aren't really the cool ones because these tests that will come back up were conducted at the Nevada National Test Site. We are now going to move to the Bailey Uniform series of tests, which were more militaristic in intention. These were designed to detect detonations of nuclear weapons in an era where underground nuclear testing has now become prevalent and the only feasible way of doing it. So, let's move away from the peaceful atom to the wartime atom. 
the Vela uniform tests in general as, as a concept were designed to determine how a country might conduct a clandestine nuclear test and whether or not the tools that were available at the time to the scientists and engineers were up to the task of detecting such a test and distinguishing between a nuclear event and an earthquake. Seven tests were conducted under the Vela Uniform series, including the only two atomic bombs to be detonated east of the Mississippi. A huge underground salt dome, located 21 miles southwest of Hattiesburg, Mississippi, was the home of two nuclear detonations named Salmon and Sterling. Only a granite plaque marks one of the most clandestine nuclear operations ever conducted by the United States. The only tests that ever occurred east of the Mississippi River or the Rocky Mountains. Part of Project Dribble and shot Salmon and Sterling were aimed at finding out whether or not a country could muffle the shockwave from a nuclear explosion by setting it off in an underground cavern or an already pre-made cavern. This was the concept known as decoupling that they were looking for. The Atomic Energy Commission picked Baxterville, Mississippi, generally because it sitted on top of Tantum Salt Dome. They would lower a borehole into the salt dome and detonate it. This one would be Shot Salmon, a 5.3 kiloton device. Given a little time, a 0.38 kiloton, so less than one kiloton device called Sterling, was lowered into the very same cavity created. A little longer down the line, two gas-type detonation devices would also be lowered into the same cavity. These were non-nuclear in nature, and were a part of a separate operation. Now, here's where I, it gets a little fuzzy. The tests were both declared a success, considering that they were simply designed to collect and record data. However, the information they took away from this on how to detect clandestine nuclear operations were not released to the public, or at least I just have not been able to find any information. There were a few other tests in uh, this series. Um, the Fallon clip that you saw earlier at the beginning of the video, that was a part of the Vela Uniform test, and I apologize, I have it's actually really close to where I live in Reno, and I have been to the site, but I haven't been able to record there yet. But that should be coming up on one of my days off. It's only an hour, hour 20 minutes away from where I live exactly. Um, that was the first in the Vela Uniform series. And that was looking more towards um, what happens if I set off a device in an earthquake prone area. Does that change on the seismograph? There was a few others conducted in the Nevada test site and also in uh, Kamchika Island in Alaska. That was Operation Long Shot, if I remember correctly. But I don't have any footage of that. So, with the conclusion of the two tests in Mississippi, Vela Uniform was rounded out but we still have a little bit more to talk about, so let's keep moving. So now we're coming back to the Plowshare program. Um, I want to just clear one thing up. There's a lot more tests that we could be talking about, but I really wanted to keep it focused on the Plowshare program and the Vela Uniform series. I wanted to keep this more on the civilian and scientific side of the testing. And then I can do a whole another series on some of the more military-oriented uh, tests. So this will be the last one we talk about for today. This is Sedan, the Sedan test, or the Sedan crater. And it is part of a, uh, well, in my personal opinion, probably one of the dumbest questions and shortest answers I've been given. Can I dig a big freaking hole with a bomb? The big freaking hole they got turned out to be 1,280 by 320 feet. This is, this, is, this is just silly. This is genuinely silly. But they wanted to see if you could build uh, a new harbor in an instant, if you could clear a pass through a mountain for a new highway system. Can you build stuff with bombs? Oxymoron, you can't build with explosives, but you can, well, maybe you can. I don't know, I'm kind of rambling. They did this to see if you could dig a hole. Congrats, it dug a hole. And that's what the taxpayers got. <laughs> the hole they ended up getting was 320 feet deep, with a maximum diameter of 1,280 feet. And it has a volume of 6.6 .6 million cubic yards. The amount of material that the test uplifted was 12 million short tons. 
The biggest problem that occurred from this test was that it was probably, it was one of the dirtier tests conducted. By dirtier, I mean it produced an extraordinarily amount of fallout, generally from all the dust and material being lifted up into the air. Famously, which once I get around to it, we'll talk about St. George, Utah, which, which was a town just across the border that was directly in the wind path of the Nevada test site. And fallout covered just the entire town. Caused a lot of cancer, a lot of problems. But different topic for a different day. But this would be one of the final shots for uh, Plowshare. I mean, this was before Gas Buggy, Rollison, and Rio, Bra Rio Blanco, as this one occurred in 62, but funding was running out. And as soon as after the gas experiment occurred, the testing for Plowshare was shut down before it then reoriented itself towards military testing. Um, thank you for joining me today. I'm sorry I didn't get that footage of out in Fallon, but I'll be posting that up. Um, if you want, I recommend you look at my Faultless uh, road trip video, where I went out to the Faultless nuke of the test. We'll be conducting a series on um, some of the larger and more military nuke of the tests that occurred, and that's going to be one of them. It was a one megaton underground shot, and I will go into much more depth than I did even on that road trip and explain the whole history behind those shots. Because there's a lot of cool stuff. Um, other than that, I hope you all have a great day. Y'all are staying safe out there. And uh, I'll see you all next time in the next video. Bye.